Now we're going to go from an ACL type that gives us not enough options to an ACL type that it just feels gives us way too many options at times. And that's an extended access control list. And when I mention all these options, they're certainly not something you have to know for the CSENT and the CCNA. Knowing a couple will be very helpful. And we'll take a look at those in the syntax in the next couple of videos. But again, there are so many options with extended ACLs. You can get so granular with it that you could go years, probably decades, and not use all the options in a typical production network admin job. But there are two that we've got to use, and that's the IP source and destination address. Uh, extended ACLs require these. Even if you don't want to use one of them, you're still going to have to put the word any in for the one you don't want to use. You have to allow any instead of just ignoring it. And as I mentioned, a lot of options here. The, the ones we use most often are going to be the source port and destination port. Protocol type can also be matched. We'll see that here in a few minutes. Uh, these are truly optional options. You don't have to specify a value for any of these options if you're not using them to match traffic. That is, you don't have to say, okay, any source port. That's implied. Uh, those are not even considered unless you put them in the ACL line. In the example we're going to look at here, we're going to configure one and go through the syntax of it. And then a couple of videos down here, we're going to have another lab using these where we use standard ACLs, extended ACLs, and discuss where to put an ACL in your network. Uh, so we have more lab work with these coming, but I want to stick with the fundamentals of the command here, and we'll look at the syntax as well. In this example, packets that we're sourcing from 172.50.50.0/24 should not be permitted if they are destined for 172.50.100/24. Everything else should be allowed. So we know what we've got to do here. Now again, of course, extended ACLs give us a lot of options. Let's take a look at a couple of those here on router one. And we'll start with this one because you've got here a different uh, one option that we didn't have with standard call dot dynamic. And we will me I'll mention that later in the course, kind of tell you what's going on there. It's certainly not something you've got to uh, configure yet, but a dynamic ACL can come in handy as well. But right now we're sticking with static ones. So let's go ahead and do a deny here. And you can see that suddenly we're given a lot of options that we didn't have with standard ACLs. The ones that we're concentrating on here are uh, IP, any internet protocol, and then at the bottom of the list, TCP and UDP. Because if you are going to specify a port number in an ACL line, you've got to put either TCP or UDP. That's the only way you'll get those options. Right now, we're going to stick with IP. And then the source address and the source host, you know, like we saw before with a standard. So let's go ahead and put 172.50.50. And what's my wildcard mask for a 24-bit network mask? Easy. I know that's low-hanging fruit for you right now. There you go. Now we've got to put the destination network in there. And the destination wildcard bits, we know what that is. And you can see the dollar sign there near config. That means that the command is longer than what you're seeing on the screen. And believe it or not, after all that, we still have options. We could log, you know, log matches against this entry. Um, the only other one I'm going to mention to you, and we're going to actually see that live, it's a great one to nail. Uh, is time range because sometimes you just want an ACL to work say over the weekend to block certain things or maybe during the week to block certain things. I'll show you how to do that later. Right now we're going to stick with this line and now I need a permit all other traffic line, right? So what is that going to be? Permit IP and what are we going to see after this? Any and any. It's got it. You got to have two. That's not a typo because one, the first one's for the source and the second one's for the destination IP address. So again, with the standard ACL, you'll only see the word any on a line like this once because we only work with the source IP address. But on extended, you've got to put the word any twice. Just looks a little funny, but you get used to it, no problem. And let's see, let's go ahead and put it on the interface. We'll put it on E0 here. And you just put it the exact same on the exact same way, and you got to say inbound or outbound. And that's really it. That's all there is to it. 
Now, we took a look at the fundamental syntax here. I think we've got a few things on the board I wanted to mention to you here. Uh, again, if you're going to use port numbers for matching, you've got to specify TCP or UDP. We still have the host and any options. You know, nothing wrong with using either one of those. We saw the dollar sign. That's what happens when you uh, go off the screen with a command. And also that you've got to put uh, the word any twice at the end of a line of an extended ACL that is meant to negate the implicit deny. Um, another role, a very fundamental role, and we're going to do show access list a couple times here as well and in future labs, but a huge role of extended ACLs. Both the source and destination have to match the line in order for the action to be carried out. Don't be misled on this. Even if you put any, so that's why we're putting in there, both source and destination have to match the line. If one matches, it doesn't matter. There is no match and the, the action will not be taken out. And here's what we got with that one particular ACL. Everything else is being permitted with our permit any any statement. We put it on the interface with the IP access group command. And a couple of other rules regarding the direction of the ACL. And I've got this on the board for you because I wanted you to see this uh, comparison sake. You'll see what I mean. A single interface can have two ACLs applied to it for each protocol. That's a per protocol basis. Now, of those two interfaces, one for outbound traffic, the other for inbound traffic. So, of course, the curious souls that we all are, we want to know what happens when you violate that rule. Well, to show you what happens when you configure two ACLs in the same direction for the same protocol, I created an extended ACL that would match any TCP traffic regardless of source or destination IP address as long as the destination is port 80 and you can see that here on the end EQ80 stands for equals 80 and then I used show IP interface to verify that ACL 150 was currently configured on Ethernet 0 both inbound and outbound you're not going to do that terribly often in production networks put the exact same ACL on going outbound and inbound because if you want the same thing to happen going both ways you actually need a mirror image of one line not uh, not an exact copy but this is just for a demo so I use show IP interface follow that with Ethernet 0 and you get a ton of information on that but you could see right here in the middle outgoing access list inbound access list is 150 and I just chopped the rest of it off so let me go down here now what I did then was added ACL 160 to filter the inbound traffic and to see what happens when we have two ACLs applied to the same interface and in the same direction filtering the same protocol. So I did not get a warning from the router, oddly enough. And then when I ran show IP interface Ethernet 0 right after that, you could see in the last list here, or the last line that I took out of that config, that the latest ACL to be configured and applied for inbound traffic, ACL 160, is the effective ACL for that interface. So the moral of the story really is to be sure to run no, show IP interface. Notice this is not show interface E0, which is what we usually run. Show IP interface is going to give you this ACL information. And now that we know we're limited to two ACLs per protocol on an interface, one inbound and one outbound, and what happens when we try to bend that rule, so to speak. And again, here's the second rule. It's much shorter. Uh, and I've got a non-break here. Sorry about that. But it's very rare that you would want to apply the same ACL to inbound and outbound traffic, but you can do that. It's not going to give you any kind of violation. So let's just say, for argument's sake, I know I've already got this once, but what was that? 100, just want to make sure. 100 out. So let's put 100 in. And you're not going to get any explosions or anything like that. Uh, again, it's rare you're going to do that because, of course, your source and destination, you probably need to turn those around if you're using, want to use the exact ACL on an interface. You would want a mirror image, not an exact copy. So while I'm showing you that it can be done, I am telling you that in production networks, it's going to be very rare that you would actually want to put an exact copy of the same ACL going in and out. Might happen. Named ACLs are up next. 
And these babies are a godsend because, as I mentioned with the numbers, you know, first we thought, you know, 100 ACLs of each type is all we're ever going to need. Then we got the extended ranges, like, hey, it's a party. You know, we're never going to use all these. And then, of course, some companies and other organizations started doing that. So now we have the option to create a named ACL. And I like these for two reasons. First off, we avoid any numeric limitations, but also you can give an ACL a more intuitive name. You know, Block Network 56, something like that. I think that's what I've got here in a lab. Um, you know, anything, allow Telnet 4. Uh, some people don't like to do that. And of course, if you work for an enterprise network or just a large network and they've got change control procedures, like here's what the named ACL will be, then that's what you've got to do. But in lab environments, especially those of you who go on to go after the CCIE, and again, I hope you do, uh, it's, it's a tremendous accomplishment. Um, the more intuitive information you can put on your routers, uh, you would want to do that because you'll want to look at a 30 line ACL and say, okay, I wrote this to do such and such. So when we come back for the next video, we will create a named ACL. The application's a little bit different, so we got to watch this on the exam and, of course, on the real equipment, which is where we'll be. And we're going to follow that up pretty shortly with a discussion about where to put ACLs in your production network and in exam questions. And then we'll see all that in action because I've got a brand new lab for you here with a standard ACL that we're going to start with and an extended ACL. And we'll go forward from there. So lots of great lab stuff up ahead. I'll see you on the next video.